Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, back to working on the Jimmy Duresta bandsaw, and one of the challenges that I've had for this saw is finding what I think is an appropriate motor to power it. Uh, according to the literature, uh, the catalog and stuff that came with this, it recommends between a seven and a half and a 10 horsepower motor to power that saw with, or at least that was the horsepower requirement that it said that it needed. Um, a seven and a half horsepower motor is probably what I want to use. And I've been on the lookout for one. I've got one that's been in my just shop for a while that I can use, but it's a fairly modern motor. And I really wanted something that had more of a vintage look to it. And it's been a little bit challenging me to find one. A viewer recently dropped this motor by the shop, uh, more or less donating it to the cause if we can use it. I do like this motor. It looks a little bit more vintage. It is a seven and a half horsepower three phase motor made by the US Electric Motor Company. And uh, we need to see if it's a good candidate. Now I can tell you, it seems like it, it spins up pretty good. The bearings sound good in it. It seems like it's running smooth. A lot of times you can feel a lot of up and down thrust in these, these bear, the bearings are bad. The bearings feel like they're okay. Uh, we got a crazy looking box over here on the side. Got the tag. According to the tag, it's a dual voltage motor, which means it can run either 440 or 220 volts. Uh, however, I need to get down here and look a little bit closer. I only see three wires coming out of the motor, which means that probably at some time this motor had been rewound. Originally, it would have had nine leads coming out of it, but a lot of times when you take these motors to a motor shop, they're just going to pull out three leads and they're going to internally wire it for either 220 volts or 440 volts. Uh, so I don't know what the voltage is on this. We're going to have to figure that out. And I do want to just, before I spend any time cleaning this thing up and uh, kind of getting it ready to use, I want to just make sure, power it up and make sure it's going to be working okay. That's kind of the goal today to see is this motor a good candidate for the saw or not? So, and if so, we'll uh, get it cleaned up and looking more presentable than what it does right now. Let's uh, start digging into this. So someone had put this bar up on the top with a hook on it so that it could be lifted. And I'm glad they did because we used that to unload it out of the truck when it came here. Uh, but I do want to take this off. It's covering up the motor tag and I want to be able to read it a little bit better. So we're going to start by just pulling this off and uh, getting to that motor tag a little bit better. This electrical box on here is obviously not original to the motor. That was added on by somebody at some time, but I want to pull it off and uh, I can get to these wires a little bit better. And if it's a suitable motor to use, we'll probably replace this uh, motor cover as well. Just gonna clip these wires. And there's, it's like four bolts holding this uh, cover on. I'm going to pull this little shroud off. You can see there's a tag right here that shows the wiring diagram for the high voltage, low voltage. You probably, I can't hardly read it, but I can tell that's what it is. It shows the nine wires and how to tie them together, which is standard on these motors. So that tells me this was originally supposed to have nine leads coming out of it. There's only three. So again, probably rewound unless there's nine up, up, up underneath this. Let me see if I can pull this off and, uh, see what's going on in there a little bit better. That's good. The screws seem to be coming out easy. <clears throat> My word. Gorilla tighten that one up. <laughs> My guess is with the cotton in there is this motor was probably in a cotton gin somewhere at some time. And 
That's a cotton seed, so telltale signs. Probably came out of a cotton gin. And with this motor having come out of a cotton gin, assuming that that assumption is right, I can probably also assume that this is uh, going to be wired for 440 volts. So let's see if we can confirm that before we go any further. So guys, I have very temporarily and very just quickly wired in a plug into this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug it in. We're gonna see if the motor spins up and I'm gonna check the RPMs on the uh, spindle and uh, see what it's reading. That should tell me whether it's on, what the voltage is um, based on that compared to the, what's on the tag. So um, see if we get any sparks here, guys. <laughs> actually sounds decent. All right, so this is just an RPM gauge. I'm gonna stick it up in there. Try to get it on the center of the, there we go. And I'm gonna let it run. So it looks like we're going 1800 RPMs. And that's what the badge says it's supposed to be running. So maybe this is wired for 220. Okay, changing plans. I was thinking, and I think it's incorrect, and I need to check with my motor guy to make sure I'm right on this, but I was thinking that if you ran a 440 motor on 220 volts, that you wouldn't get the same RPMs. It'd be running slow. However, a quick internet search says, no, the, the speed will be the same, but you're only gonna get about a quarter of the horsepower out of the motor. So let me check with my motor guy and see what I can do to see how this thing is wired up. And uh, I'm just not sure. There may be some, something I can do with a meter to check it. I'm, I, just, I just don't know, but uh, I'm gonna see what I can do to verify what voltage this thing is wired up on. All right, guys, I have uh, resorted to asking around town to folks I know that might have some motors and found this one here from a friend of mine that found it in a stash of stuff that he had. And uh, this one might do the trick. So we got seven and a half horsepower. It's a Baldor motor. It's a dual voltage motor, 23460. We got the wiring diagram to wire this thing out, assuming that we don't run into the same problem we had on the other one where it had been rewound in the past and was no longer a dual voltage motor like the last one we ran into. I ultimately decided I really couldn't figure out if that other motor was on 440 volts or whether it was on 220 volts. And I strongly suspect it was on 440 because of the cotton bowls that we found in there, which tells me it was probably in a commercial cotton gin, very common in this part of the world where I live at and where that motor came from, lots of cotton gins. and they're all going to run on the higher voltage. I mean, that's just pretty much going to be standard in there. All right, looks like there's lots of wires in there. That's a good sign. So let's see what we got here. Yep. All right. So let me pull this piece off the bottom down here. This looks very promising. Wires appear to be in good shape on the inside. That other motor, the uh, wires were all dry rotted. I was going to have to do something with the wiring on there to, because that old cloth wiring that was on it was just uh, disintegrating. Interesting. So they had everything wired up, but they didn't have it grounded. The ground wire just went up there and was cut off. All right, um, and based on the numbers here, let's see, this is number eight and number two. That's the, the number on the leads coming out and eight and two tied together. Eight and two, that's is wired for low voltage. Okay, that's good. 
So if you're not familiar, uh, on a typical three-phase motor, there's going to be nine wires coming out of the windings. Um, and they're going to be numbered. Uh, in this case, there's little, um, little tags here. This is wire number one and seven. And there's a wiring diagram on the chart over here that tells you for low voltage and high voltage. And again, one and seven tied together, that's uh, wired for low voltage. And so, and in this case, 430 volts is what the tag says. So 420, 430, 440, depending on what your voltage is, it'll, it'll work on any of them. A lot of it depends on when the motor was made and what the standard voltage was at that time. It has changed over the years. It used to be 224, 40, and then they changed it to 23460, and now most of it is 22480, if I remember right. All right, so nine wires wired for um, low voltage. I'm going to wire these up real quick into my little hot wire that I had in here, and we're going to test this motor and just make sure that it spins up and runs. Uh, but this looks real promising. And I'm just going to plug it in. Sounds good. All right, all looks good here. Let me check the, this motor is supposed to be running at 1725 RPMs. I'm going to check that real quick. I'm just going to check the RPMs on this motor. This is just a little tachometer. This one is pretty slick. It has a stopwatch built into it, so you just read it directly. Um, it's got a little rubber piece. I'm going to put it up on the center of that shaft. And I push the button here, and you start looking. I got a clock down here, so it ran around the whole time. That was 1,000 RPMs. Came around to 1862. So this is running 1,862 RPMs. That's real close to the 1,825 that uh, it's rated for. So it looks like our RPMs are running where they need to. The uh, bearings actually sound pretty good on this motor. While I'm letting this run, I'll just show you the motor tag on here. So again, uh, tells the spec, there's the frame, it's a 213T. Uh, I probably am going to have to order a, a plate to mount this on, and I'll need that frame number for that. Horsepower 7.5. Here's the voltage again, 230, 460 volts. And here's your wiring diagrams over here for the nine leads. They're numbered, and you. this is the line coming in down here. So you tie your line into number one and seven, two and eight, three and nine, and then four, five, and six you tie together. For high voltage, you tie together seven, four, eight five nine six those don't have line put to them but the line comes in on one two and or one two and three yeah one two and three down there anyway shows our amps here and me where i can read that the light's not on it good so 22 amps at 230 volts and 11 amps at 460 volts so your amps are going to be roughly are going to be exactly a half so you use the higher voltage you use half the amps lower voltage twice the amps and you're going to equal out either way 1725 rpms for 60 cycles and cut a couple other little specs on there as well but this motor will do the trick and this is what we're going to use on the on the on the saw i think well i really like the looks of this old motor back here on that saw but i think we're just going to have to live with this one here and i think this is going to be a good functioning motor I feel a lot more comfortable with it anyway. Um, I was told by the person I got this from that they had recently replaced the bearings in this. Um, they were using this motor and took it out of service. I don't know the whole story on it, but I'm not even going to worry about trying to replace bearings or anything on it because I think it's in pretty good shape. I do want to kind of get it cleaned up and get a new fresh paint coat on it just so it doesn't look so rough. So I'm just going to take my wire wheel on the angle grinder here. We're going to go in here and knock any rust off, get as much of the old paint off as we can, and uh, shoot, it with, uh, shoot it with some paint. So we'll just come in here and do that real quick. I'm going to try to stay off that tag. 
got it wire wheeled pretty good here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a coat of paint. I'm just going to use some dark gray paint on this. And I'm going to start by kind of painting the bottom of it. I'm going to let this dry, then I'll flip it over and I'll paint the, uh, the upper side. Oh yeah, that's going to look good. All right, we'll uh, get this uh, coat of paint on here and uh, let it dry a little while. I'll flip it over and we'll paint the other side. Got the motor cleaned up and repainted. It looks a lot nicer now, <laughs> same motor. Uh, but anyway, we got a good fresh coat of paint on here and uh, I think it does look a little better. Uh, I think next what we want to do is I'm going to get this thing mounted on the base that I got for it. I got a movable base to tighten belts up with, and we're going to work on getting the pulley mounted on this as well. So let's go ahead and get started on that. I'm going to move this out of the way at the moment. Oh, it's heavy. So this is the plate that we're going to mount the uh, motor to. Go ahead and... Uh, Take all these nuts off. This is what the motor mounts on. This motor base is made for that specific size motor, frame motor. If you look on the motor tag, it tells what the frame size is. The frame size will kind of tell you what the hole spacing is. And you can order these little adjustable plates uh, from places like McMaster Car, which is where I got this one from. Um, industrial supply house that fits that motor. And what this will do is, is there's a nut here on the back. When you tighten and loosen this up, it moves the legs in and out and you can easily adjust the tension of the belts um, on your machine. So it's very nice for uh, being able to do that and to get them good and tight. You just tighten that nut up on the back. So uh, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and take these nuts off and then we'll drop the motor down on these bolts and uh, put the nuts back on again. I'm gonna take all the screws out. The bottom kind of drops down on this side. If you look on the bottom, you can kind of see how this works. I'm just gonna take a two by four and put up underneath this temporarily just to kind of hold that in place while I put the motor on. So let me go grab the motor, we'll drop it back on there and get this thing put back together. Let me get the bolts back, our nuts back on there now. We'll mount this plate a little bit later on. I need to get the uh, pulley on the machine mounted so that I can line these uh, the belt up and I'm gonna have to position this motor exactly where it needs to go based on that. So I'm not ready to do that yet. But what I do want to do is go ahead and get the pulley that's going to go on this motor mounted. So this is the pulley that's going to fit up on here. This is a, a flat belt pulley, a brand new one. I just purchased this from the paper pulley company uh, up in Tennessee. I can't remember exactly what city they're in. It's a little small company. And they make these, uh, they call these paper pulleys. Uh, this actually has, I think it's kind of a fiberboard in here, laminated in, and then they just turn it. It's actually got a little crown on it so that the belt will run right. And we're gonna power this with a flat belt going to another flat belt pulley down below. Um, this particular one that they have takes a bushing like such that fits up in here, and then that'll fit to your shaft. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this particular bushing that they make, which is a A3 style bushing sold by, uh, oh, who was it? Browning. Yeah, Browning uh, makes these bushings. Unfortunately, I think that they're kind of obsolete now. I don't think they make this bushing anymore. Unfortunately, I was able to find a new old stock one on eBay, but it's the wrong bore on the inside. This needs to be inch and three eighths. I think this is an inch, I'll, I'll have to measure, but we're gonna have to go bore this out to the proper size to fit up on this shaft uh, to adapt from uh, this shaft to the hole that's in the pulley. 
Uh, so we're gonna go over to the lathe and get set up and start working on that. So let's, uh, let's go bore this hub out. I've got the bushing over here in the lathe and uh, this is a one inch bore and I did confirm I need to go to one inch 375, which is inch and three eighths. And we're just gonna use a uh, boring bar and go up through there. That'll go clear all the way in and bore it out to the right size. So let's uh, fire up the lathe and get her done here. Speed that up. Just cut it right out. Looks like that's a uh, cast iron based on the looks of the chips. There's 350. All right, we're still just a little bit undersized. I got about four thousandths to go. I'm just gonna do a spring pass and see if that cleans up. Let's see where we're at now. So we're just a tad over, about a thou over. That should give us a nice slip fit up on there. I think that'll work out just fine. I did take that for a test fit and it does fit. Now, one thing I want to think I want to do is go ahead and press this into this pulley. I need to broach a key to go up on that motor shaft, but this key that keys into this uh, pulley We've kind of bored into it, so I think just to kind of keep things from moving around and holding it in place, I'm going to go ahead and press this in place and we'll broach it in the, the pulley. So we're just over here at the arbor press and it should just press right in. That's it. And now what I need to do is figure out what size uh, Broach I need to broach this and uh, there is a little set screw right here I need to line that up with and we'll broach that and hold that, that keyway in place Let me figure that out and we'll be right back So I need a 5 16 inch keyway in there. I've got a uh, Broach bush in here that fits in this inch and 3 8 hole And again, I'm lining it up on that set screw in the front so that we can tighten that key up Get it lined up just right and this is a 5 16 inch Broach. We'll uh, get that lined up and we'll go ahead and put some oil on this. This is just some cutting oil. And this will push through that hole and broach that out to, to the right size. Need a little bit extra push there to get that brooch out the rest of the way. There you go, it didn't even take the press. So that's the first pass. I'll need to put a shim behind this and take another pass down through there, so. second shim in there 
and take her down one more time and that should do it. That should get it. We'll um, go see if we can get this installed now. Let me get all this uh, parts out of here. We'll get these cleaned up, put back up, and uh, try her out. And I got a key here. Go ahead and kind of tap that in place. Pulley. Tap it on, I think. All right, I'm gonna get some Allen wrenches and we will tighten these up. There's set screw here and there's two set screws in here that tighten up onto the um, set screw that drives the pulley. So there's two, two keys in this thing. All right, let me get that tightened up. Tighten up these two first. And different size hex key for that one. One, one pulley installed and it appears to be just looking at it running pretty true. Got a little run out on the end, but that doesn't matter. There's not a belt there. Uh, I'm looking at the surface here. So anyway, looks good. I think we got her. Well guys, there you go. Uh, I think we got the motor pretty much ready here. I found a, a motor. Again, it's not the motor I was really looking for. I was wanting something a little bit more antique looking, old looking, but this is an older motor and I think it'll be fine. We got it set up with the right pulley now. Um, next on this, before I actually bolt this down again, I wanna get the flat belt pulley mounted onto the uh, machine itself. And uh, I've gotta get that cleaned up and ready to mount. Once we can do that, we can align the motor so that it lines up properly with the pulley that's gonna be mounted on there. We'll get this bolted down. And I've also got to do the wiring, put in a motor starter, put in a switch to turn it on and off, get it all wired up, and uh, that'll be coming up here shortly as well. Once we do that, I think we're getting really, really close here. I've still got quite a few things to do to this, but we are getting it to the point where we can actually power this thing up and, and try it out, so I'm really happy. Uh, one little comment that came up recently and I, I thought I'd clarify real quickly. I've been calling this the Jimmy DiResta bandsaw because I'm restoring this for my friend Jimmy DiResta, a fellow YouTuber uh, up in the New York area that uh, is actually purchased this saw and, and I'm restoring it for him. Uh, somebody asked, I didn't realize that there was a company called the Jimmy DiResta that made this bandsaw. No, the bandsaw is made by the J.A. Fay and Egan Company in the late 1800s, early 1900s. I call it the Jimmy DiResta bandsaw because we're doing the project for him. So guys, with that, uh, I'm gonna sign off here. We will catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching. Uh, big, huge thank you to everybody out there for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments really help out with the algorithms on YouTube. Those are greatly appreciated if you'll take the time to do that. And uh, as always, a big, huge thank you to the supporters of the site who support financially through PayPal and Patreon. It is what allows me to take the time to shoot the video and stuff instead of just coming out here and working in the shop. It takes me twice as long to do anything when I'm running a camera. Uh, so I get to share it with you guys. If you guys can help out a little bit there, that is great through PayPal, Patreon. Links down in the description below. And uh, with that, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.